Casual Dresser here bringing you my first ever YouTube video. I'm making this video because of this name here. Busy Stone, located in China, are sending out replica jackets, jumpers, t-shirts of some well-known casual brands and one in particular we're going to look at today is Stone Island. The 30th anniversary Telestella was re-released in 2012 and it's a remake of the original jacket made in 1982. To buy a 30th anniversary Telestella now in the market you're looking around £900 and that's obviously second hand as it was made in 2012. However, if we go into Busy Stone's website a little bit of searching will find that you can get the jacket for just $80. I have a 2012 Telestella original 30th anniversary jacket and I have ordered a burgundy Telestella 30th anniversary Stone Island jacket from his website. Let's start our compare and contrast and let's start from the top of the jacket. So. If you look inside the neckline, you will see that you have a Telestella label. Here is an original label, and here is the fake label. The first thing that comes to mind is how bright this label is on the fake. That's obviously going to be the case because it's a brand new garment. The stitching is also an issue. So on the real one here, you will see that it's used a, a cotton stitching from the actual jacket colour itself. And on here, we've just got a plain white cotton stitch. Moving a little bit further down the jacket, you'll see the drawstring around the neck. Now, there's lots of uh, casuals out there saying that the fake jackets have a longer drawstring. I haven't found this the case on the one I received on the neck. But keep watching this video and you'll see some other differences in the drawstrings. Okay, going to the middle of the jacket. If we look at the 30th anniversary Telestella badge, here is an example of a real one. And here is an example of a fake one. Most people already know that on a Stone Island badge, you will get a drop stitch. And the drop stitch comes from the yellow cotton that goes around the buttonhole. It's slightly different on this badge because on the 30th anniversary, we don't have that stitching around the buttonhole. However, we do have that stitching in the middle of the badge. Now on the real one, we've got drop stitches that connect each and every letter and number. It's almost like imagining the machine is running off one continuous thread to make the whole badge. On the one here, you will see that none of the letters or numbers are connected. This is a huge giveaway that this is a fake badge. Not only on the Telesteller, but for people on the market who are selling fake 30th anniversary edition Stone Island badges. Looking at the inside plate of the jacket, it's very similar to the neck tags. Imagine you bought the Telesteller in 2012. It's obviously going to have been through a few washers and the burgundy and the blue colours have transferred across to that plate. If you bought a busy stone, the chances are that jacket's not been through the wash yet. So those plates are very, very bright white. The same with the neck tags, the same with all tags really. Imagine that that Telestella has been through the wash, you'd expect some of the dyes to run. If it's crispy, clean and white, then the chances are it is a busy stone jacket. There are a number of other errors on the inner plate. One of the main ones that's been spotted so far is the alignment between the word peso and the number 1982. You can see on the real one here that the 1982 and Peso line up and on the fake one they do not. Another difference is the stitching around the outside of the plate. So on the original here we've got some triangular stitching that's quite evident. If you run your hand over it you'll actually be able to feel those little triangles. On the fake one here it's a much tighter bound stitch so another giveaway that this one is a fake. Moving further down the jacket, and particularly inside of the jacket, you'll see the art label. Now there's no Certi logo for this piece. Uh, it's a pre certi logo piece, 2012, so we are on art numbers only. 
Now, within those art labels, we have uh, a double label that seem to run different directions between the real jacket and the fake. Here's a real one. It says, Il Capo and Made in Italy. And each text runs in a different direction. It's almost like a book. They are running in different directions. Here, you'll see that his Il Capo label and the Made in Italy can be read from the same direction. He's put one of his labels printed upside down. Now, they've obviously missed this in the factory, but it's a huge giveaway between uh, a real one and a fake one. I've also checked this against some of the other colorways, and it's still the case. Moving to the drawstrings. Now, I've already mentioned that the drawstrings around the neck were not longer in my fake piece. However, at the bottom, they are considerably longer. So here's an example of my drawstrings on my real one. Here's an example of the drawstrings on the fake. They are notably longer. Also by touch, if you touch them, the fake one is like a rope material. Uh, it's a cylinder, it's just like you'd expect a rope to feel. My real one is far more squashed. Um, it's got some flat sides on it and curves around the outside. Huge difference in the drawstrings. The Stone Island and Busy Stone process of dyeing seems to be slightly different. And they are notably different in colours. And I think this is down to the dyeing process. The Stone Island Burgundy Telestella has a blue lining inside. The Burgundy and the Blue have both kept their colour. Of course they're a little bit warm. They are nearly 10 years old now. But they have kept their own colours. The Busy Stone jacket seems to have blended colours, almost as though they have been um, dyed with both pieces of material together. So the burgundy takes on a bit of a blue tinge. Another difference in the colour seems to be the wear. Now Busy Stone has tried to replicate the wear and tear of 10 years. We all know that these Telestellas do wear and become slightly faded. Here is my original one. There's a slight fading throughout it. It's quite consistent. Here is the Busy Stone one. It's a manufactured wear. If we look inside the garment, it's a big giveaway because the blue lining inside my jacket has stayed consistent and it's quite deep blue still. The process that Busy Stone has used for the outside of his jacket has also gone into the jacket. So the inside lining is also given a worn look. It's not really the case on most Stone Island 30th anniversary Telestellas that are real. So what do they feel like to touch? Well, the Busy Stone replica has got this pretty much spot on. If you lift them, they feel about the same weight. If you put them next to each other, they're both larges. They both have about the same width pit to pit. There's not a lot of difference. So unless you had the real one to hand, you wouldn't pick this up and say, it's a fake. The first tag we'll look at is the swing tag. There are huge differences here. Here's my original. Here is a fake. One of the main differences is Busy Stone has had to put a colour on his label. Stone Island don't need to do that. They use their colour code. So there is a difference between the two. As of yet, Busy Stone is not using a nameplate underneath the main central badge. Here's the original nameplate. Doesn't have one. Moving on to the conclusion, perhaps one of the most important parts of this video. Now, I'm firmly in the camp that we shouldn't buy, sell, or wear fake jackets. However, uh, I'll take this opportunity to applause. Busy Stone for your outstanding efforts on this fake. I can imagine most of your jackets are very similar standard to the Telestella, and it's almost spot on. We talked about the touch of the material, the weight of it, the shape of it being spot on, slight issues with the colour and some of the smaller details, but to most guys that really won't affect whether they buy this jacket or not. Um, looking at the price, obviously we've talked about $80. You spend $80, it doesn't really matter if you were to lose the jacket or to have some sort of accident with the jacket. We've got to remember though, when the jacket came out at £395, and even now at £900, you're paying that money and you're putting it into a company that is putting the research behind, behind these products. So it's so well and good Busy Stone saying, well, I can make it for $80, but all you're doing is mass producing something that's already been made. 
Stone Island's money will have gone into bringing this item to market. Obviously, the people, the sellers who sold the jacket originally will have wanted some markup on the cost. Um, we're paying for a design team within Stone Island. We're paying for prototypes of these jackets to come out. So, I think it comes down eventually to a moral decision. Now, having been on the Facebook pages and read some of the comments, it just doesn't sit right with me buying a fake jacket. These guys... Obviously, if money is an issue, these are the jackets the guys and the girls are going to turn to. I think we've got to do everything in our power to buy from Stone Island. If you can't afford to go to Stone Island, I think we've got to look further afield, possibly to the pages, the Facebook pages, the Instagram pages, the shops that I'll be reviewing in future videos. I think we've got to put our money towards those people's businesses. Um, and try and keep everything authentic. Now, that leads me on to possibly my last point, and the point that I worry about the most is that the market could become saturated with these fakes. I've already seen people openly admit to buying busy stone fakes to sell them on as real items. We've seen how difficult it is to compare and contrast a real and a fake jacket. If people are new to the market and they're looking to buy their first Stone Island jacket, the chances are that they may be buying a fake jacket. I'm hoping this video has helped you to stay away from a fake Telesteller. I can only imagine it's possibly given more information to Busy Stone and his crew into what to look for and what to improve in their jackets. Me personally, I never wear a fake Stone Island jacket, I'd never buy one and I'd never sell one, apart for this video. Um, ultimately the decision is with you and please leave a message in the comments below what you think about the fake versus real situation going on at the moment. And that's my first video for Casual Dresser, I hope you like what you saw. If you've got anything casual related that you would like me to review, perhaps you're setting up a new store online, or you've got something that you would like to bring to market, please feel free to drop me an email and I'll have a look at reviewing it. If you could hit the like and subscribe button below, that would be fantastic also. See you next time.